Have you ever wondered a Google Docs spoke can write down all the hateful and aggressive comments propaganda you're writing and tell you that you're misspelling happy words? The reason is multithreading, and with the use of it we can do a lot of things we otherwise couldn't. So first off, what actually is multithreading? Multithreading, as the name suggests, is about how we can have several threads of the program being executed at once. A thread in this case is just a sort of process of the program. Think of it like, uh, I don't know, a fork. We start off with our main process, but then we can split it up between several threads being executed at the same time. Two or more threads being executed at the same time is also called parallelism. In other words, two threads of the program being parallelly para parallelly rarely run. To do multi-threading, we use multiple cores of the computer. For you watching that may have lost your virginity, the processor is the brain of the computer, and all processors have cores. The more cores you have, the more tasks you can do at once. So a CPU with a single core can do one thing, and a CPU with five cores could do five things at once. And these different things are the threads. However, some more recent CPUs can also split each core within two or more threads. Therefore, a CPU with eight of these newer cores could do 16 threads at the same time. Okay, so how do we actually use threads? Well, for you C, C++ users, there's a library built in called threads. But for you over average size, intelligent, and sexy mamacita C users, there's a library called POSIX threads, or P threads for short. That you can easily download. Now to get a better understanding about multi-threading, I will go through some basics in the pthread library since both C and C++ users can use it. So we'll start off by creating two pthread variables that are threads. Then we use the pthread create function which will actually create threads we tell it to create. We then give the address to our thread that we want to create. Next we can specify attributes of the thread. As an example, whenever we create a thread it takes up memory on our computer. So if we want the thread to clean up all the memory automatically when finished executing or if we have to join the thread with another. By setting no, we will just have the normal settings. Then we tell the thread what function it actually is supposed to perform. This function will be a void pointer run where we either can return something or just return no. Finally, we can pass in arguments to the function that we are executing. Then lastly, we join back the threads and make everything go back to a normal program. We can also, if you want to, use the return value of the function here. Now if we add this program, we will create two threads that both do this function. We will then join them back with the main process. Now since our threads are going to do a lot more stuff than a main process is doing, it's going to take much longer to finish and join with the main process. And I mean much longer to finish. Like at least two seconds. And that's a pretty long time before finishing. Right? Anyways, the main process will wait for them to finish and then continue doing everything after. Now as you can see, we can access the number variable declared here outside everything from both threads. And this is because all threads share the same memory. Just like everybody online nowadays. No, but seriously, how did it get to this? Anyways, this doesn't work correctly all the time. So you see, if both threads read the value of the variable at the same time, they will both take the number, increment it, and then assign the variable the same value, instead of taking turns incrementing it one each. This is known as race superior, race condition. To stop this, we can do multiple things. As an example, we could make the process have a lock, also known as a mutex. So even though it sounds like some type of genital disease, the mutex is used to make the two threads not act at the same time. So the first thread will lock the mutex, and now if the second thread tries to access the code, it can't, as the mutex is locked. Then when thread 1 is done, it unlocks the code and thread 2 can access it. So you should hopefully know what threads and multi-threading are right now. But if you want to learn some more, I will link a good playlist down below. Even though it's not as funny and inspiring as me. So bye bye, see you in the next video. There's nothing more. You can leave now. <laughs> ooh, ooh, have you heard the news? Only cool people press off this video now. Wow. You should probably do it. You know. Leave. Leave.